Welcome back again. This is Sean from Strategy Snacks, and this is episode nine. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about automation and automating your life. <clears throat> so let me know what you guys think about this episode. Feel free to like, comment and subscribe um, across any platform. If you're on Spotify, if you're on Apple Podcasts, you're on YouTube watching this, um, Google or Stitcher. So again, if you're watching this on any platform, please like, comment and subscribe because all the support does help me. A uh, quick update on what has been going on with my life. Uh, I fixed my chair so it no longer squeaks when I'm moving around, which I happen to do often as a habit. Um, I also got invited to do a speaking engagement. So I will be speaking in Long Island uh, probably in the next upcoming weeks or so. Uh, something I had, I believe, in about two weeks or so. Um, so I got invited to speak about design marketing and creative brand strategy uh, to other small businesses and other entrepreneurs in the field who are looking to kind of like jump in and uh, dive in and not really understanding um, what design or marketing can do for their business. So I will be going out there to speak and then thank you for my friend Deese for inviting me um, and setting it, setting this up and uh, for thinking about me. So I will definitely uh, am looking forward to that. It's really important to give back and help other people out. Um, it's, I'm doing it completely for free. So my own experience and I'm being transparent about that, but it, it's more so for uh, my experience and being able to help other people. And I'm um, going to try to get some of this on film. So I'll probably bring my camera with me um, to this event and see if somebody can record this. Um, well, I talk so you probably can get some of the gems and I'll probably put this up on my YouTube. Um, if you want to check that out. So if you are or do not know, you can find my YouTube in the show notes below or the description, wherever you guys can see this at. Um, that is Sean Marcano TV. If you look it up on YouTube. But yes, I'm going to try to get this on video. Um, I will be giving advice and tips about like the importance of design, uh, the, the importance of having a good logo, uh, the marketing material and setting up easy experiences. So because I come from a graphic design and a branding background, I think it's super important to not only look the part, uh, feel the part, and then throughout all of your deliverables or pieces that you have, all of your um, print work, your digital work, right? Everything needs to be somewhat seamless so that when people are experiencing all, this, all of these uh, things that you're giving them, uh, they recognize you and they can have this sort of like brand awareness for everything that you are providing to them as not only a service, but um, just over time, they begin to associate you with certain keywords or certain terms because of how you present yourself or how you show yourself uh, to to them and to others as well. So like that really goes a long way. So I, I can't wait um, for that to happen. And um, I'm really looking forward to being able to speak to them. Uh, the next thing is I got a new design opportunity. Um, which I'm really happy about um, to work on in a, like a design system and, and rebrand of a charter school. So I'm really, really happy for that. Uh, again, I appreciate all my friends and my my, my support. And, um, everybody that looks to me for assistance in this realm and in design. And um, I'm really happy about that. And so I'm really looking forward to that. I think it's really important to give back. And it kind of lines with everything that like, I, I kind of stand for, I, I'm a big fanatic of like learning every day and um, working at it and, and learning stuff and like building your knowledge. I think it's really, really important. Um, and to be able to like to work on some project like this where uh, I'm helping out uh, a potential new student, you know, uh, enter this whole new world of like middle school or high school, right? Um, being a part of that journey through design or Maybe they thought like, oh, wow, that school looks cool, right? Like those experiences are, are really why I, I'm doing what I do and what, why I love what I do. And so you never know, like potentially that can be the, the, the attraction point or the point where a parent is interested and, and, and notices, um, you know, this new identity. And and so I'm, I'm really excited to be working on this new, uh, this new design system and, and this new rebrand for them. So for those who don't know, a design system consists of a couple things. 
So um, I will, well, there's a couple, is it, we're going to separate this. So there's a brand guideline. There's a style guideline. I believe in my previous episodes, I've spoken about that. Pardon me. There's a brand guideline, a style guideline, design system, pattern library, right? They all have their um, unique, like certain quirks and, and, and their importance. So for a brand style guide or brand guideline, pardon me. Um, you kind of have how the logo works and um, its use case and how the colors work and uh, what kind of typography. And then you start getting to like style guide, right? Where you're basically ex you're showing the this how, how your logo, your colors and um, how they operate on certain deliverables. So like um, when you're creating some sort of digital ad. Uh, or some sort of banner banner ad, right? Um, what are the rules for the use of that logo or how, what's the, the sort of the template kind of a setup, right? So these kind of things you give off to other creatives, other designers, um, other businesses or organizations who are working with you uh, so that they can then create stuff that is, abides your look and feel. Again, you looking the part and playing the part, um, is an important piece for the entire experience for your users, your customers, your consumers, so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, uh, when it comes down to a pattern library or does and a design system, um, more so the design system kind of transitions now into the product design space where uh, you're creating an entire system of how this experience works in like in a in the digital space. Um, so like. Uh, how does my typography work? Um, what what at what instances do I use the bold seventy five point type, and then how my body copy, and then how does um, when do where I where do I use these graphs or calendars or pickers or op, you know um, sliders, uh, so on and so forth, right? So. Um, there's a lot of these and this goes much to the designers and um, hopefully entrepreneurs or small business owners that just mostly focus on business learn more about this so that when they do work with other designers they can then speak about these things um, and bring this up to the table and like well hey I, you know I heard you know somebody's podcast and them talking about a design system I, I would be curious in developing this or, or, or having this for my business so that I can be better set up as a business um, and 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 it helps you in the long run, the long term, right? Many big corporations and businesses have these. And so these are the proper, these are the industry tools that'll help you in the long run um, to operate your business. So keep that in mind. So moving forward with our automation conversation, <clears throat> I don't know what it is, but. Oh, man. Thirsty as hell. Uh, all right, so um, we're gonna move on to like our automation and, and and why this is so important. So throughout this podcast, I'll bring up a lot of like technology conversations and the benefits for designers and creatives and business owners, right? And I just wanna tie that in the middle <clears throat> for our users and our consumers. Because at the end of the day, without them, um, there is no business, there is no creative, there is no us, right? So automating hashtags uh, with text replacement. This is a simple trick, a little hack uh, for people that are trying to market themselves on social media platforms, such as like Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn is really, is blowing up. Um, they recently made a change to their stories, uh, story system similar to Instagram. So really take advantage of that. But for people taking advantage of like posts and using hashtags, pardon me. Once you have your set of uh, hashtags that you plan to use, uh, 30 is the max on Instagram. So keep that in mind. I believe other platforms do have their maxes. But on Instagram, say you find your 30 hashtags, you optimize, you know, you find your five big ones, your 10 others, your 20, you know, you, however you figure out your own strategy, right? The that's kind of the way I do it. I find like five big subjects or five big topics you would say then next would go a couple hashtags for each of those subjects so some sort of like sub 
um, sub hashtags for each of those big main five. And then the remainder, I add some like specifics to the post of itself um, to try to attract other people to view and engage with this. Um, so the, my goal for doing this is to gather impressions and then uh, in the long run, in the long term, to appear in the, the top nine of these active hashtags that are being posted up. So whenever someone does search up designer, my pictures come up or my images come up and then which drives and boosts your engagement. So the way we automate this, <clears throat> the way we automate this is by using text replacement. So iPhones, whoever has an iPhone, I believe, I don't know if Android has this, but I use iPhone for my personal uh, work. Um, so iPhone has a text replacement feature. So if you go to settings and in settings, you then swipe down, you search and you look up text replacement. It's under general and keyboard. You can then press the text replacement and, and then add and then create a phrase and you search and you can basically use this text replacement tool as a way of automating um, your life. It saves a lot of time. Um, so like, for example, you open up the text replacement um, and you put in a bunch of hashtags. So I believe on Instagram, um, the hashtag limit is 30. Uh, so I think, you know, people use LinkedIn and Facebook, uh, so on and so forth. But I use it for Instagram. Um, so shout out to all the digital marketers out there. Um, so you, any, you, I use like five big hashtags. And then for each of those hashtags, I add about five, uh, two, three others for those five big hashtags. And then the remainder, the specifics for that post, um, which is really, uh, it's been helping me and I kind of like the way that's been working out. So I'm testing out how that operates with the algorithms and uh, how it impacts my engagement and awareness and impressions, all that kind of fun stuff. But um, you put in those 30 hashtags in your phrase and then the shortcut I put like biz three or something like that, right? And then every time you type in biz three, those 30 hashtags now get populated and put into your uh, description or your comment or wherever you decide to type this out. Um, and it helps a lot. It helps tremendously. So you don't have to go out of your notes, you know, copy and then paste. And it just saves a bunch of like mental cycles and it saves a bunch of time, um, which is a big hassle and a headache and a handful. So uh, if you're interested in doing that, do check it out. Um, I learned this from Chris Doe. So if you're interested, check him out. He knows a lot about brand strategy, creative strategy. Um, so definitely check him out. Um, the next thing I want to discuss is automating <clears throat> emails uh, with like pre-made emails um, that you often like uh, get a lot uh, or that you send out a lot. So as a person that does a lot of like design and business kind of work, um, I do deal with a lot of account kind of stuff. And so uh, there's a lot of emails that I have to kind of like handle on the back end. So um, I kind of have a bunch of templated emails that I have. And so, for example, onboarding a new client or new customer. Um, and for those that do run a business or are entrepreneurs, this can be very helpful to you guys. Uh, so, for example, uh, if I'm introducing myself to a new client or customer, I have this like template out email, a name, pardon me, bunch of content, content, content. Uh, it was a pleasure speaking to you, blah, blah, blah. Um, I look forward to talking to you, so on and so forth, right? And so I send this long heartfelt message to my client or customer. And so it's a new customer client. Um, they might not know that it's kind of like templated, but it is. Uh, but it's kind of understood from a business owner's perspective, like from that side of things, things do have to be kind of like templated because if you deal with a lot of people, it can be very monotonous and difficult to send out uh, heartfelt messages that are to the T customized, like it can be a very big pain and you're trying to get back to what you do best, which is your work. So um, if you are interested, do create pre-made templated kind of emails to kind of like create a system to send stuff out to people. Or if you're more of an advanced power user, check out CRMs like HubSpot and um, there's a couple other ones out there in which you can like automate that process. Um, 
So you create like 10 different emails and it's like for digital marketing. So it's like the kind of emails you get, like they kind of spam you like MailChimp and so on and so forth. Right. Uh, but if you want to have this, this for like the everyday kind of person, you know, keep this in your notes or one note. Um, I use one note per, uh, for the most part, like that's kind of like where I organize all of my stuff. So thank you, Caesar, one of my teammates on one of my uh, design teams that helps help that helped me out a lot uh, learning that from him. And so it keeps me all organized with my notes um, and my emails and kind of that kind of account stuff. So thank you for that. So if you're interested, check out OneNote. Uh, I think it comes along with the Microsoft suite or you can just download it uh, for free. Um, yeah, but yeah, bookmark or save your emails. It saves a hell of a lot of time, um, time that you can be doing other stuff. Uh, the other thing is, is creating SOPs uh, for routines or set of tasks that other people can learn and do. Uh, so if you're looking to scale or to grow or to expand or even just tell your little cousin or brother or sister, right, to handle some of the monotonous tasks that you need to do, um, create an SOP. So what an SOP is, it's a standard operating procedures. Um, and say you want somebody to check your emails, delete your junk, put it in the trash, throw away the trash, um, and send out 10 emails every day, right? You create some sort of proceed or even even every week, right? You create some sort of standard procedure. So you, you can create it on Google Docs or Microsoft Office or Pages or wherever you can write. Uh, and you type out step uh, checking email, right? That's the title. And then the next task, you know, step one, open up Google Gmail or uh, Outlook account. Then next, enter username, blah, 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 password, blah, blah, blah. Step two, open inbox, right? And you create this like long kind of step-by-step uh, -step process with screenshots of what these things look so that even a kid won't mess this up, right? Like there's no possible way someone can mess this up. You listed out the entire step process of what you do and you give that to somebody else so that they can handle and you can get back to doing other stuff, which is like attracting new clients, creating, designing, helping other people out, right? Um, it saves you a bunch of time. And so look into SOPs and, and this is, it can really help out for a lot of stuff, like consider onboarding or bringing in new, new hires, right? If you create a bunch of SOPs for what they need to do, it's less question of like, well, how do I do this? Well, I gave you a Google folder or, or some sort of folder with a bunch of documents, read those through. And that's, that should be sufficient enough of training to get the wheel started. And then a little guidance every now and again, and assistance uh, to help them keep the ball rolling. And then you learn and, and th that's how you really help out people with onboarding so that it's less of a task of walking them through and a less of a, a laborious kind of chore to, to onboard them into your system, right? So take that into, into account. If you are trying to expand, if you are trying to scale, uh, take advantage of SOPs. It can be a very, very helpful tool. I use it uh, for some very monotonous tasks, uh, such as like ciphering through data, uh, getting information, doing surveys, uh, kind of stuff. So definitely check that out. Uh, the next task, or the next thing has to do with tasks is take advantage of iPhone shortcuts on the iPhone. I use iPhone. Um, this might be a thing on like Samsung Android phones. I personally don't know. I'm a very big fan of Apple, very big fan of what they do, their design, their aesthetic, all of that kind of fun stuff. Take advantage of iPhone shortcuts. Um, iPhone shortcuts helps me on my day to day. For example, hey Siri, it's movie time. All right, time. my lights now change. Okay, got it. Hey Siri, streaming lights. Okay, done. All right, so I'm using a third party app that connects to my shortcuts. And that third party app just, you know, it's for my lights. Uh, it's called Magic Home. There's other ones that, that come, that work more so with the Apple Home devices, uh, but it then connects to your shortcuts. And then now you can automate Whenever I arrive here, do this, right? So if that, then this, or if that happens, then do that. That kind of like step-by-step, um, -step, uh, kind of like shortcut. So 
there's shortcuts where you can geotag. So whenever I, before when I used to go to work and come back, I would geotag my house. When I arrived nearby, um, I would have my lights turn on to a setting that I liked when I arrived getting to my house. You know, a bunch of things. I When I was going to the gym, um, I would put a shortcut to open up my uh, exercises on my notes app. Uh, so I would, ha I would have to do much. I don't have to swipe up. I just press the, the shortcut. It pops up on my phone. And it's less of a tap here, tap here, tap here to then open and then to find it, right? Like it, it saves time. The less amount of time that you have to spend time processing mental cycles, um, it just makes your life more efficient as an entrepreneur, as a creator. Again, I want to push this and stress this out. If you yourself are less stressed, if you yourself have more time, um, you can then become a better designer, better creative, a better entrepreneur, a better business owner, a better product designer, right? Um, because you'll have more time to do the things that you enjoy doing and that you enjoy uh, creating for other people, right? So take advantage of iPhone shortcuts. They really are helpful. They really are beneficial. Um, sometimes it can be a little clunky at times. I think this came out on like uh, iOS 13. It can be a little clunky <clears throat> with having to like pop up notifications to activate some stuff sometimes. But for the most part, they can be really, really helpful, especially when they they cooperate with Siri and you can tell Siri to do a bunch of stuff. Hopefully she doesn't activate. Um, so yeah, definitely check that out, guys. That brings us to my next thing, the Apple event. I was right about 5G. Um, I mean, who couldn't see it coming? Uh, people have been talking about 5G for quite some time. Uh, it was interesting seeing uh, Verizon CEO there uh, and them discussing the possibilities and, and what's possible and the kind of experiences that you can have uh, and the kind of like customer experience that people can have because of 5G. If you have faster internet, um, things now become rapidly like, oh, whoa, we can do this now, right? Like you can stream 4K TV across eight different cameras and all of it coming to your phone, um, you know, watching NFL or basketball or something of that nature because when speeds of internet become that fast, you can put and push through uh, more data without bottle uh, bottlenecking or throttling um, because of the speed of the, end of the internet. I don't remember the exact details of it, but it's quite interesting. I'm also quite excited on what this means for creatives and designers uh, in regards to LiDAR technology. Uh, and so what LiDAR technology is, is light I think it's like light radar. It's like basically it determine it figures out how far something is based on how light bounces off and comes back to the camera to the sensor, um, which is really, really interesting. So it's kind of I think it might have the possibilities of doing some like light um, uh, light photogrammetry. And so photogrammetry is uh, I don't know if anybody has seen, but these photographers use these like like uh, 10 lenses on top of this pole and uh, or kind of thing and then they shoot um kind of like high textured images of stuff so tree textures or uh, soil grass rocks say you go to the grand canyon and you're gonna do some photogrammetry of some rocks right it takes a lot of high quality high resolution images <clears throat> scans them and then patches them together to create a three to, you can create a three-dimensional high resolution uh rock texture which then you put in a low polygon um or low kind of like faces um of a shape in 3d and then you place that over it and then you can have you texture map that kind of like high quality um texture from that you shot and then you get kind of the same detail um without it bogging down your system uh it's just a little process between there in which you get that you extract kind of like the level the density of the texture but once you do get that down, you can get that because of the data that you shot um, with photogrammetry and, and the images that you have taken. So definitely take advantage of that. If you guys are planning on getting the new iPad or the new iPhone, um, LiDAR has a lot of possibilities, especially with VR and AR coming around. The next thing is, um, again, I was right about 5G, so keep that in mind. <laughs> Um, it's going to kind of like, I, I, this is like the second time I'm recording this because I recorded this segment, um, like twice 
and the first time it wasn't recording um so i did like a good 20 minutes of like speaking and it just wasn't picked up so kind of frustrated about that but it's okay um if you guys are interested make sure you guys do like comment and subscribe to the podcast check me out on youtube spotify apple Podcasts, google stitcher iHeartMedia, so on and so forth uh, it'd be helpful and beneficial for me so thank you guys um this leads up to the strategy snack <clears throat> leads me to saying keep experiences simple that is today's strategy snack so if you are a first time listener the first time you're coming to my podcast and listening every episode is a strategy snack whether it could be for me or the people that i'm interviewing people i'm talking to and it's kind of like the big key takeaway is the it's the bread and butter for that's the jelly this everything for the, the the meat and potatoes for the episode right um keep experiences simple like the little gem for the episode a little snack right so keep experiences simple uh, and what I mean by that is, is take note from these big companies, big corporations that are keeping things simple. What, where is your attention at? A lot of people using Twitter, Facebook, Netflix, stream platforms, Hulu, right? They keep things very, very simplistic. This application does this task, does it well, does it right? And it keeps you coming back because it does it that well, right? People think, take Netflix, for example, it's actually number one, it set the bar for this kind of, um, keeping things simple, right? And what happens is based on data, um, it drives love for platform. They say that 64% of consumers are more likely to recommend a brand because of simple experiences. Simplicity drives growth. Since 2009, a stock portfolio made up of the simplest publicly traded brands as defined by Siegel and Gale has performed the markets by 686%. Simplicity drives sales. 55% of consumers are willing to pay more of a uncomplicated experiences. So if people see something as easy to interact with, um, say if you have a brick and mortar store or if you're creating an app, you have a website, if it's easy to check out, and I said this on my episode eight, make checkout easy. Make the, the ability for you to get something to your cart, check out and purchase it fast quick and easy because if it becomes difficult it becomes laborious it becomes something that is like oh man I, this is such a big process it's taking longer than it should right you're gonna get less results than if you were to make that experience simple remember it's about your consumers it's about your users it's about the people that you serve and if you can make that experience as simple as possible the sky is the limit right netflix has done really well with this look at all these look at google right Google is as simple as a search bar in the middle, but it's super powerful And what you can do. If you click images, you can back uh, trace images. So if I put a picture of myself, it'll get, it'll scan the internet for where it might have to see an image um, or it might like using like AI, it'll scan other images based on what looks familiar, based on color, uh, based on my face, based on if it can identify who I am um, and it'll then dot and connect pieces in order for that to happen right it'll search news articles all kinds of powerful things but it's as simple as google hasn't changed their interface much or really the last 20 years like keeping things as simple as possible and it's engaging and it's pretty fun what you can do when you keep things really really simple so that is today's strategy snacks remember it drives love it drives growth and it increases sales if you're doing it right and if you're doing it well and if you do what you care about and do what you love right um keep that in mind keep it simple again this is sean from strategy snacks podcast and if you're listening first time listeners i appreciate you guys i appreciate all the love and i appreciate all the shares comment likes and subscribes um again this is strategy snacks podcast and this is sean i'm out of here <laughs>